He said that I'm good enough. Grabbing my da-da-da. Thinking about things that I shouldn't have. So I tell him there's one of me. He making fun of me. His girl, a bum to me. Like that boy is a cat. Saying he's at home, but I know where he's at. Probably blowing her back. Thinking about me, cause he know that ass fat. Hello everyone, welcome to As If The Podcast with your host, me, Asia, my queen, that is me, that is she, I am where I want to be, dee 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 dee. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing, I'm doing okay, I'm doing all right. Nothing bad, nothing good. But you know, of course, I have to bring the drama. I have to bring, I have to bring it. About two days ago, I had an emotional breakdown. When I tell you guys, I cried for like five, six hours. I bet you can't do that. I bet you can't beat me in that. I looked up at the time and I was like, oh, I've been crying since 4.45. It's 10. (laughs) It was 10 p.m. It was 10 p.m. and I was still crying. And I couldn't put a finger on why. I could grab some things though. You get what I'm saying? Like one moment I was crying about this, the next minute I was crying about that, the other minute I was crying about this. And I was just like, wow, I'm just trying to look for something to cry about at this point. (sighs) Which brings up today's topic. I want to talk about how you're at peace. You're not bored. Yeah. Sometimes peace can feel like boredom when you're used to chaos. I get it. If any of you guys can relate to me, you could understand it when I say that life will be going so well, so peaceful. You're just looking around like, wow, everything is so beautiful, working out so well. How can I fuck this shit up? If you can relate to me when I say that, then, um, Come on over, come on over, baby. Girl, when I tell you things will be quiet, things will be nice, everything's flowing, life always lives, but I am putting my best foot forward and and it's really feeling like it and I'm appreciating myself. I'm always like, hmm, who can I call to fucking irritate me? (laughs) who can I call to irritate me who can I bring up from hell to fuck my life up again if you can relate to that come on over come on come come sit next to me (sighs) why do we do that why why must we do that well we know this person is full of shit right and then we give them a call. We're like, oh, you know, I really miss them. <laughs> and be surprised they're giving us full of shit again. And you really be thinking like, damn, like I knew this was going to happen. I knew all this was going to happen. Or like when you finally get your bills all together, right? Like. You're, you're catching up. You have an extra $10 in your account after you pay on me. My account is not in the red this month. We, we looking good, right? And then you're like, um, I think I want to, and you'll make up something random that you want to do and just fuck some shit up again. Broke once again. If you can relate to that, come, come, come sit next to me. Cause some of y'all be acting like y'all better than me. I don't like it. I think about what makes us feel that way. What makes us feel like we wanna fuck shit up when we are receiving the goodness that we've worked for? Don't get me wrong, do not get me wrong. 
all this goodness over here. I've worked hard as hell for baby. This did not come for free. <laughs> it did not come for free. It was pricey. Very fucking pricey. When I was looking at how much I've spent on therapy, I was like, oh my God. And then I started thinking about the fact that I be going to therapy to deal with motherfuckers that refuse to go to therapy and think they don't need it. Okay, now, okay, I wanna fight. I'm getting angry. I'm getting angry, let me, let me be a lady. I'm wearing a dress. I'm wearing a dress, let me be a fucking lady. But doesn't that piss you off? You're going to therapy so that you can mentally handle the people that refuse to go to therapy and they act like they don't need it. I feel like you owe me money. I really do. I feel like you owe me money or we should at least split the cost. Cause this isn't fair. Anyways, back to the topic. Life will be looking so great, things working out because you put them there, okay? And you get this urge to ruin it. Why do we do that? Why must we do that? And everything for me always comes down to worthiness. When I feel like I cannot have something, I check myself, I'm like, do you think you're worthy of blah, 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 blah? Once I get into that mindset again, that I am worthy of this good time that I'm having, I'm worthy of things going well and, and being easy, I'm able to really appreciate those things. We get so comfortable in chaos when shit feels peaceful, we get uncomfortable. How in the hell? What I've heard some people say, which I don't know if I actually believe it. I've heard people say, I thrive in chaos. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. But then I think like, okay, if you're thriving, imagine how much more you could grow or get done if your environment was peaceful. Me personally, I don't thrive in chaos. When one thing in my life is going wrong, everything else is fucked up. Which I, which I never understood why employers would tell their employees to keep home life at home. We're humans, we're not robots. That's just not how things work, I'm sorry. If I get dumped, I'm going to feel it at work, I'm going to feel it at the grocery store, I'm gonna feel it at the gas station, I'm gonna feel it at home, I'm gonna feel it everywhere. Why, how the fuck does, how am I supposed to just turn that off? And there are some people who have that switch and I'm not here to tell you to no longer be that or anything like that, that is fine. I. More power to you. I'm not, I'm not. I remember when I was going through some, <sighs> some love stuff when I was at my last job, girl, I would always have to walk away from the counter and cry and shit like that. I'm just not that type. I'm not the type that can separate my work life from my home life. And call me a bad employee all you want, cause you're right. <laughs> you're right. And, but it is what it is. Like, just don't hire me, okay? Oh, don't say that, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I shouldn't have said that, I should have not said that. But I'm gonna feel things, and maybe that's why God gave me the gift to be able to express my feelings and have the courage to do it in front of the camera and things like that because baby, if I was a doctor and I was about to go into surgery and I just got dumped or someone just passed away in my life or whatever, uh, while I'm opening your heart up and shit, like 
That's why I'm in the lane that I'm in. So I could just be myself. If I wanted to be on this motherfucker crying, I can. I can. Tink. I do want to get a lot more mature in that though because I am an adult and I can't just, yeah. You know, and there are opportunities that I want that I can't do that. I don't thrive in chaos. I like things to be peaceful, quiet. I don't like too much fucking going on. I'm just, I'm not that type of person. So because I'm not that type of person, um, I need to, I would like to really appreciate being at peace and being in the goodness of what I've created. And, um, Because I know what the other side looks and feels like. And I know when I'm in it and I know when I'm out of it, it doesn't feel good. So I have to think like, girl, you know it don't feel good. You know it does not feel nice over there. So why are you trying to go there? Why are you, what about how you feel about yourself makes you think that you deserve to be in that space? I have this friend that I would fall off with all the time. And I'm not a fall off, fall on friend like that, like at all. So it was really interesting when her and I kept doing it. It would be over really little stupid shit. It wouldn't ever be over anything serious. And we would stop being friends for like a couple months, be friends for a couple months, stop being friends for a couple months, be friends for a couple months. And then there was this one time where we just stopped being friends for a few years. And I didn't really think that we were going to rekindle our friendship ever again, to be honest. Um, And then there was this one day where I was like, damn, I miss my motherfucking friend. Like she was so funny. I felt so understood by her. And I just, I wanted my friend back. So I think I had messaged her asking her how she's doing or whatever. And we started talking again and I went to go see her. We would FaceTime and stuff like that. And then she told me that her boyfriend was feeling uncomfortable because I like women. And I was like, wait, whoa. And granted, he hadn't really gotten to know me because her and I weren't friends for a couple of years. But I was like, no, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. And she tried to explain to him, like, it's almost like a sister thing, how close we were. She was one of those friends that even if you guys weren't talking, you were still like, that's my motherfucking bitch. Like, yeah, like she's pissing me off right now, but that's my bitch. Like she was that friend for me. And I realized that, I don't know, like it's a little toxic to be honest with you. Like I don't subscribe to that idea anymore, but that's where I was at at the time. So she told me that he felt uncomfortable with something she was wearing around me. And honestly, that really pissed me off because one, people try to portray this predatory behavior on gay people and it's fucking disgusting. I just, I don't appreciate that. And two, what, like, what? I was just, I was just so confused. And she thought it was funny. Like when she would tell me that shit, she would laugh. And I would be like, okay, no, tell him to fucking relax. Because let me just say this. Y'all know, I remind you guys every motherfucking episode, I'm a Leo, okay? Our pride is through the roof. You ain't going to go around here saying, oh, Asia liked me and she likes me or da 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 And I don't really like her. Da, da, da. She, baby, what do I look like? So it was, <laughs> it was fucking with my pride. I'm like, okay, you ain't going to have people walking around here acting like I like somebody that don't like me back. And da, da. We're not doing that. I, what do, no, we're not doing that. So... One night I had FaceTimed her cause it had just gotten too far. And I told her like, Hey, I don't fuck with this. Like, why are you dating a dude that's like this? Like it was just really pissing me off. And 
I could have communicated what I had said a lot better. I could have, for sure. However, I was pissed. I was really, really mad. And, but looking back, like, I'm like, damn, I should have came with more respect, but I just didn't feel like I was being respected. And like, that was a friendship that like, <clears throat> there would be a lot of things that would, like, I was just tired of her always choosing bummy niggas. Like, I was so tired. So when that two years had went by, I had went to therapy, I was getting my shit together. And I always believed that people deserve second chances, right? And, but what I have added, but what I have now added to that is you deserve a second chance when your behavior has changed. Right? I used to always just think that everybody deserves a second chance. Here's a second chance. Here's a second chance. Here's a second chance. Here's a, here's, a, no, 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 babe. When the behavior has changed, then a second chance can be warranted. But like, no, but we were both, I feel like when we came together, it was a second chance for both of us. It, it wasn't just me giving her a second chance. It was her giving me a second chance as a friend too. So, but I showed up different. And she was on the same type of time and like, and it made me so irritated. So I reacted in an ugly way. So we're on FaceTime. I'm pissed. Why is she going to say, well, do you want to just talk to him? Why would I want to talk to him? You really think I'm going to be on this phone and be like, hey, my name is Asia. I don't like your girlfriend. Like, no, why would I do that? Why would I do something like that? Of course, we stopped talking again and I haven't spoken to her since. I think it's been probably a little less than a year. But what I had learned from that situation was the fact that nothing told me to rekindle that friendship. Nothing, not one thing, but I miss her. And I felt like at that time, I was getting my shit together and things felt like they were coming together and I was just wanting chaos back into my life, to be honest. I wanted chaos back into my life and I got it. And that's a beautiful thing about trying to rekindle a bullshit relationship is the fact that it'll remind you that it was a bullshit relationship. <laughs> it will definitely remind you. Cause you'd be like, you'd be like, oh, I miss Jack. Call Jack. He gives you some bullshit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, that's why yo ass. That's why I sent your ass to hell. That's why you were in hell. And with me, with that other girl, like I didn't send her to hell. She still ain't in hell in my head. Like I love her, but that's just not something I'm going to tolerate. I am not, you ain't going to sit here and, and, and treat me like a no motherfucking predator now. Just cause you're an insecure fuck. I'm not, I was like, okay, bye. Bye Batman belt. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. He was on his Instagram wearing a Batman belt and like looking down at it. I was like, okay, a Batman belt. All right. Earlier this morning, I was having really self-deprecating thoughts and I had to say out loud, I am worthy. I am worthy. I'm worthy of love. I am worthy of patience. I am worthy of comfort. I'm worthy of peace. I had to keep saying that out loud because sometimes we forget and we're just in the motion of things. And then, I don't know if you guys have ever felt this way, but there's been times that I've seen myself in a specific light that I have worked for and it's so amazing. And But there's this thought in my head that's like, oh, I don't deserve this. It's so weird. It is so, so weird. And I'm in the most beautiful relationship. My girlfriend is amazing. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. And when she does things for me or she treats me a certain way that I'm not used to, um, the first thing I think about is, do I even deserve this? And then I have to tell myself, yes, I do deserve this. Cause one, she's not stupid. <laughs> she's not a fucking idiot. So she's not gonna just do things just for anybody. 
I have to trust in the fact that I have made the decision to be with someone that's not a fucking idiot. I have friends, I have people in my life that aren't fucking idiots. They're choosing to be around me. They're choosing to love me. So I need to step up to the plate and know that I deserve it. And the thing is is that when you don't know you deserve something, you treat it terribly. There are people who have someone in their life that loves them so much and they can't seem to just treat them with some fucking respect. But then the person that treats them shitty they give all that respect to that the person that loves them is asking for. But you don't love yourself enough to know that you deserve love. So you're chasing it from somebody that is withholding it. You think you don't deserve love that you don't have to perform and chase after all fucking day. And you know, You'll learn, we'll learn eventually. Shit. I was talking to my sister and I forgot what we were talking about, to be honest, but I had told her that life is going to give you some bullshit. Don't add on to it. People you love are going to die. Friendships are going to go sour. You're going to lose your job. Things happen because that's life. You got to take the good with the bad. But don't help these motherfuckers out now. (laughs) You don't be your worst enemy. That's what I told myself. Like, listen, I'm going to feel myself all the way. I'm going to tell myself I'm fine. (laughs) I'm going to tell myself I'm beautiful. You know why? Because there are people out there that thrive off of bringing you down. And I ain't going to help them. So I'm only going to speak good things about myself. I'm not here to contribute to you guys' bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have this video on my podcast Instagram page. And people are saying some, some mean things, right? And honestly, I was reading through them. I was like, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, because the thing is, I'm not going to feed into what you're trying to do. And I eventually just shut the comments off because I was like, okay, this is, you're doing too fucking much. Y'all doing too much. And sometimes you gotta revoke access. But yeah, no, every episode pretty much ends like this. (laughs) Knowing you are worthy, knowing you are worthy, you are worthy of the goodness that you are creating. You are worthy of the love that you receive. Believe that, please. I'm saying that to myself too. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching me. I appreciate you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Asia My Queen. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Asia My Queen. Thank you again. Bye-bye.